Hey there stampers and welcome to another Trending Tuesday. <clears throat> Today, I'm, um, this week and probably next week, I'm working on tags for um, some Christmas gifts that I'm giving at my children's schools. So, <clears throat> I don't know if I can mention this person's name. So let's say there's a well-known crafter who does traditionally these tags every year for Christmas. And his name is, sounds like Jim Schultz. So he's the person that I'm going to be copying his trend. So um, this is one tag. He's done something similar. It's not quite. But I'm only going to be using Stampin' Up! products. So I may do a couple of these before Christmas. But um, <clears throat> I have some that are going to be coming up on my blog. I finished two yesterday and I've got two in the works today. That's a quick look. Just and these are all Stampin' Up products. So come to my blog on Wednesday and, and Friday and maybe Thursday too. Anyway, let me. I want to show you quickly how to do this. Um, I am using this stamp. I don't even remember what it's called. Collage, Christmas collage, I think. And I just I ink it, inked up using my markers. So I selected some colors. This is. Um, uh, Island Indigo, I'm using uh, Lucky Limeade, and Cherry Cobbler, and Always Artichoke, and then there's a little Daffodil Delight, and Crumb Cake. So these are the markers, and I went ahead and I inked it up, and you can see kind of where I used the colors, but I want to show you, it's still dirty, but I want to show you what I did, is I, when I when I um, inked up the stamp, I took my cardstock like this. So this part, bottom part of this tag is going to get inked with a sideways image, and this top part is going to get inked with um, the, the joy. So I would place it down um, like this after I've inked it all up and huffed on it, and then I would alternate it. I would put, um, so this part and this part will be, so then this becomes the top part and then this becomes the the bottom image and you just reverse it. So I did the same thing with this and you can see, and it's the same on this tag, there's this little line where I didn't quite get the measure right and it doesn't look right. So I just took a, little, I took a piece of um, crumb cake seam binding, I sp sprayed it with a fine mist of water and then I crumbled it up into a ball to wrinkle it and give it that old look. I also came back in um, on my image with an aqua painter and my little palette with ink colors. I'm trying to, my room is a mess because I've been doing so much. But um, <coughs> so the joy wasn't that dark. Um, so I came back in with some Island Indigo. And I carefully took my aqua painter and filled in the image. And I did it for everything that I wanted to be darker. So um, eat the holly berries, the holly leaves. I didn't do the Merry Christmas here because I like that faded. But I did the 25. <clears throat> and so that's a way when you have, because it takes a while to ink that whole stamp up. And even if you huff, the image isn't quite as strong as you want. <coughs> to create these <coughs> fine branches and the holly leaves, I used my two-step bird punch. I just had it. I always just have something out of reach, don't I? I did have it. I just used it, too. Um, anyway, you know what the two-step bird punch looks like. Oh, duh, it's underneath. How many of you are screaming? It's right under there. So, um, <coughs> I used Lucky Limeade and Always Artichoke, and I punched out a bunch of the wings and then the stem with the leaves. <clears throat> and that's what I have here. So to make a holly leaf, I start with this piece. <clears throat> and all I do is I take my snips and I sort of just take a little curve out of that and I leave the point and then take another little curve. So it creates that look. And then I start on the opposite end, leaving the point and just going in ever so slightly and then 
one in the middle, and the last one. And you want to leave some of that, and then I fold it. Like that. And then you have a little holly leaf. Very easy. Now for these branches, it's um, very easy as well, but it is more time consuming. All I do is I take a center portion out of each leaf. So I don't know if you can see, and it's hard for me to see because I don't have my glasses on. But just following the, um, the line of the leaf, I go all the way to the base of the branch, and then I do the same on the other side. So you're, it's almost like taking out a little leaf from the center part of the, the leaf. And you can see, here's the little center bit, and I just pull it out. And I do that for all of the branches. And I think I did three and three, and I just kind of shoved them in once I had them done. And then <clears throat> I put the little holly leaves down here. And the little, um, those are just the basic pearls, and I didn't have... Um, craft cherry cobbler so I just took a reinker and I put it on the basic pearl and I used my heat tool to try and get some to stick most of it wiped off but you can see it kind of works it's faded it has a little cherry tinge to it but like the card is supposed to be vintagey anyway so I liked the way it turned out um, and I distressed the edge and then I mounted it on early espresso and used um, the now sadly retired early espresso satin ribbon which I love and I hope Stampin' Up! brings it back. Anyway, I hope this has inspired you to try to um, mimic Jim Schultz's things. You, If you have your you know well stocked Stampin' Up! stuff, <coughs> there's really no reason to have to buy anything else. You have everything you need at your disposal and you can work with what you have. So um, I hope this was helpful and yes I'm sick again and I'm sorry. It seems like every cold front I get my allergies worked up. So anyway have a great week and I'll see you soon. Bye!